new addition center, a facility that intends to maximize the revenue and attract international gemstone market. Our reporter Hezron Kimari spoke to a mining consultant on how important is the facility and move by the government on lifting the moratorium in mining licenses. Let's listen in now from Voy. Well, President William Ruto is expected to tour Taitaveta tomorrow and he will be expected to officially open the Voy Gemstone Center, uh, which is uh, one of its kind uh, facility in the country and also in East Africa, uh, basically to add value to the gemstones uh, across the region. And now we'll be joined by a mining policy expert, maybe to share with us some of the details and also concerning uh, some of the uh, issues that were raised by the mining uh, sector, maybe Karib katika KTN News. Maybe I uh, introduce yourself, Rafu um, What do, you, do we expect by the coming of the president? I'm also uh, officially opening the Voyager Center. My name is Majala Mlagui. I am a money policy consultant and also the former deputy governor of Taita Taveta. Um, we are very excited to host His Excellency the President, Dr. William Ruto, tomorrow um, to launch the Voy Gemstone Center and to come and discuss development matters in a more in-depth manner than from when he came here the last time in July where he had a Thanksgiving ceremony in Mwatate. Um, we're looking forward to the launching of this Gemstone Center because it's one of the key institutions that has been set um, set up to be able to support, especially the artisanal and small scale miners, the gemstone miners of Taita Taveta as well as Kenya at large. Um, this building was completed in 2018 and handed over to the, um, to, from the contractor to the Ministry of Mining. Um, and so far it has been operating at a very basic level and now we, we're hoping with His Excellency's visit tomorrow, we'll be able to see much more activity from traders, from the miners coming in to bring the stones for value addition, um, from training of our women and youth on value addition as well as um, the sales, uh, gemstone sales um, techniques, and to be able to um, bring together the industry in a wholesome manner so that we're increasing the transparency that we require for sales of gemstones in, in Taita Taveta. Maybe what do you have to say in relation to um, at some point the the uplifting of the mining moratorium by the ministry. So beginning of this month, we saw that the ministry had a very progressive move in lifting, partially lifting the moratorium of mining licenses. We've not been able to get mining licenses for the past almost four to five years. Um, prior to that, there was still a lot of issues based on the fact that the the Mining Act was new, the regulations had just been set in, um, there was still a bit of settling of the dust in terms of the mining cadastre where uh, miners are able to um, apply for mining concessions. So this lifting of the moratorium has reignited um, the sector, it has input a bit more energy for operators because they're able to now be assured of the security of tenure of their investment. If they want to attract additional investment, they're able to say that this is how we're legally protected um, and the, the government is also able to start tracking in a more wholesome manner the, the revenue that should be coming from the mining sector, um, how um, the mining operators are complying with the law and generally getting us to a point of uplifting the sector from the 1% or less than 1% GDP that it currently contributes, hopefully to the target of 10%, which is what His Excellency the President is looking forward to and even hopefully surpassing that. So maybe um, is this a kind of um, and any other possible changes in the ministry in line with the mining sector? Is it favorable for any miner or maybe the, the, the ones who are growing? So Taita Taveta, um, I don't have the exact um, data to back up this particular statistic, but I would say anecdotally that we have about 80% artisanal small-scale miners. Um, and most of those are doing it from... A, pretty much subsistence perspective. So it means that they require a lot of support from government, not only to be able to comply with the laws that are in place, the legislative framework that is in place, but also to increase production so that they're able to um, uplift their operations. The lifting of the moratorium is a fantastic um, piece of progress for them because it means that they're able to secure the operations from any cartels or greedy um, interested parties who have been look, who have been trying to 
um, push them out of their particular concessions. However, as part of the announcements that were made um, beginning of this month, there was a categorization of minerals. Um, some of the minerals were categorized as construction, some of them industrial, and some of them strategic. And we've seen in that particular strategic mineral categorization, Savorite, which is one of our main um, gemstones that is mined in Taita Taveta, and it is mined by the artisanal small-scale miners for the most significant part, um, this then becomes something that is going to be very cumbersome, um, hindersome, and also difficult for them to be able to comply with in the time frames that have been put together. The lifting of the moratorium came with a two-week deadline saying that all of the mining operators need to submit all of their paperwork, um, make all of their applications to the ministry within two weeks. We know that most of the artisanal small-scale miners are in the Mashinani areas, in the very deep rural areas. So to be able to, one, get this news on time, then comply with all of the requirements within a two-week time frame is extremely um, limiting for them. If anything, it disadvantages them, and it means that anyone who's in Nairobi who's looking to speculate or grab certain um, productive interests within Taita will have an advantage. On the matter of the strategic minerals, um, the declaration is that any, any mineral that has been declared as a strategic mineral will have to be exploited in conjunction with the National Mining Corporation. As it stands, the National Mining Corporation is, a, is still a very new entity that is um, growing and setting up its um, framework of operation. And it means that the the artisanal miners and the small-scale miners, by the time they comply with some of the additional requirements that would be, uh, have been put in place so that they can get their licenses, it's, um, especially because they've been told that they need to apply it on a first-come, first-served basis, we're seeing that this is going to hint, disadvantage them for, for the most part. So the, we know that the ministry, um, through the leadership of the CS, um, Mwishimu um, Amvuria, the cabinet through the leadership of His Excellency the President, and these are things that we'll discuss tomorrow. We know that they understand what is required by the, um, the people within the ground. Um, that is not small-scale miners. But we would want to have better dialogue. We'd want to be, have better understanding of what the ministry um, is intending on, in terms of support to that is not small-scale miners. Well, uh, okay. Uh, well, as you've heard, that uh, some of the uh, sentiments by uh, Honorable Majelam Lahui, who is former uh, Deputy Governor of Veta Kanda, and also she is now the consultants, consultants in mining sector. And as she has said, maybe she hopes maybe in tomorrow's meeting by the President, uh, 